I guess I've always been fascinated by the invisible. The tiny marine life in the oceans, or phytoplankton, are invisible to us without a microscope. And the chemistry of the oceans is largely invisible to us as well. Those phytoplankton are interacting with that chemistry in a world that exists beyond what we can easily see. So we still have many fundamental questions about how elements such as nitrogen, phosphorus, iron, and zinc get into the ocean, and how different phytoplankton use them as nutrients. And these are critical questions for understanding how marine ecosystems work. I guess I always knew I wanted to be an environmental scientist of some sort. When I was six, I used to tell my mom I wanted to be a paleobotanist. Who thinks that? But um, I feel like I, I never made a decision to study the environment. It was always just what I was going to do. The decisions came in, in the form of where and how I was going to do that. Phytoplankton form the base of the food chain. They are the plants of the ocean, essentially. This means that they conduct photosynthesis, in which they take carbon dioxide, a gas, out of the atmosphere and then turn it into the building blocks of their own bodies. This moves carbon, then, from the atmosphere into the ocean. And carbon dioxide is important because we know it's a greenhouse gas, which contributes to global climate change. So in this way, these tiny phytoplankton actually impact the climate of the entire Earth. Really fundamental to how the Earth maintains life and how life maintains itself on Earth as well. But while we're learning a lot about phytoplankton from around the world, one place where we have very little information is from the Antarctic, just because it's so hard to access. So we uh, actually went to the Antarctic to collect phytoplankton samples to bring back and analyze. When we flew down to Antarctica this time, we actually flew down in luxury. Ladies and gentlemen, again, a very warm welcome on board. Usually when you go to Antarctica, you're flying in a military plane, very few windows, and it's really spartan, and it's loud, and you have to wear earplugs. But this commercial airplane was a <laughs> complete opposite. We have a great place to the door. But then once we got down to McBurdo, you land on the ice. They have vehicles that come and pick you up with massive tires so they can move over the ice and the transition from the ice to the, uh, to the road, which can be quite rough. It took a few days to get set up, and then it was time to get to work. The helicopter pilots were fantastic. They really know the area well. It was quite overwhelming to be in the helicopter, mostly because I felt like all of our equipment was going to fall on top of me <laughs> sitting in there. So they would fly us in a helicopter probably only about 7 or 10 miles away uh, and then drop us off. They would land on the ice, and then they would leave us there. We would unload our gear and basically work at the ice edge on ice that was probably about five and a half to six feet thick. Uh, and then, you know, you could walk up to the edge of the ice and the edge of the ocean, basically. And we wanted to be on the first year ice um, so that it would be thinner and we could actually get uh, phytoplankton that were actually living on the bottom of the ice or within the ice itself. Uh, but it worked out great. We'd go out to the field and we'd get dropped off at 9 a.m. and we'd be there till 9 p.m. usually. 12 hours seems like a long time, but it goes awfully quick out there. And, you know, we're often scrambling to get our three samples in within a day. So the first thing to do would be to set up the filtration system so that we would be pumping all of our water. We'd be filtering all day long, collecting tons of phytoplankton living in the ice as well as below it. We had lots of water flowing through those filters pretty quickly. Look at that. It's a ring of ice. It was, it was pretty challenging working out there, though, because our tubing and our filter rigs were constantly freezing up. Well, everything froze. Uh, I can't explain why. Maybe because we're in Antarctica, but... <laughs> It was handy to have our little cook stove out there so we could heat up some water in order to melt some lines when we needed to. So we would just pour the warm water over the frozen line. In a couple instances, that helped to thaw things out. So now we can take what was previously invisible and see it using new biotechnologies like genomics and proteomics. Genomics is the study of all the DNA of an organism, and from that DNA, proteins are made. These proteins then allow the phytoplankton to do their fundamental processes like converting light into energy. So proteomics is a new technique that we're using that allows us to see all of the proteins that phytoplankton have assembled to respond to their environment, such as the freezing temperatures or the scarce nutrients that we see in Antarctica. Our collaborators from the Venter Institute took half of the samples back to their laboratory where they'll be looking at the expression of genes. We took the other half of the samples back to our laboratory where we'll be looking at the expression of proteins. So once we finish these analyses, we'll have a much better understanding of how these phytoplankton respond to different environmental conditions, so things like temperature, light, nutrients, and possibly even climate change. Because we were at the ice edge, the whales would come up to breathe oh, um, before diving under the ice there, and so we were pretty much working in 
pretty close vicinity of whales all day long. Oh, he's huge. Look at that. And there were also a lot of penguins that we saw and uh, seals. And the, there's a whole ecosystem that's basically living off of these phytoplankton that we're studying down there. It was a really spectacularly beautiful place. I'm always amazed in this field of oceanography how things that are basically pretty fundamental are things that we're still uncovering because it's such a young field. So even though these phytoplankton are largely invisible to us, you can really see how fundamental they are in supporting this entire ecosystem in the Antarctic and really in, in, in the rest of the oceans as well.